Uh, my name is Kenny Peoples. I'm a JBoss technology evangelist for the integration product line, mainly data virtualization and fused service works. Uh, I have my uh, email there, and I have a blog. And um, I was doing work with AMQ and Fuse, still do some, uh, but just a shout out to Christina Lynn that's uh, taking over AMQ and Fuse uh, as a evangelist. So glad to have her on the team now. Okay, so um, the agenda, uh, what we're gonna cover in this session is around data virtualization and big data. So we'll have a, a discussion on demystifying big data uh, and then uh, discuss data virtualization and making uh, big data, um, really all data available to everyone. And then uh, discuss the Red Hat big data strategy and platform. Uh, then discuss uh, real world customer examples. Uh, we have a couple of those uh, with Red Hat Big Data Platform. Uh, then go through um, a quick slide on data virtualization roadmap on some of the things that are, will be included with DV6.1. And um, I have demo on here. So I did wanna go through um, one of the demos that I have and I like to show, um, but since I'm not, uh, we're not in a room together um, physically, um, this demo that I want to show is actually across multiple systems. So what I've done is I have links for several demos and the demo that I want to show you, um, I have some screenshots that I'm gonna walk through and just discuss and you can actually go download uh, the demo, and this demo is um, data virtualization with Hortonworks data platform with Hive and Hadoop and federating data with MySQL. Um, so I have that link, you can go watch the video later on for the whole uh, demo, or you can download and try it yourself. Um, there was just, that demo in itself can take a good bit of uh, time. So, um, and it also is uh, running on multiple machines. So uh, then we'll have a QA. and a All right, so uh, let me do something here. There we go. So this first slide, um, In the industry now, um, this slide is just supposed to show that um, in the industry now, there are um, differences with some people on what big data is. So uh, with this slide, it's just showing that, um, you know, big data can be different things to different people. Um, but one of the things that I like to um, talk about and explain uh, what d big data is. Uh, and it's something that came out um, from a analyst, um, it's currently with Gartner, um, about the definition of big data. And uh, that revolves around um, the three Vs of big data. So, um, they are the volume, velocity, and variety. So the first being volume, many factors contribute to the increase in data volume. Um, Transaction-based data stored through uh, a uh, unlimited time frame. Uh, unstructured data streaming in from social media, increasing amounts of sensor and machine-to-machine -machine data being collected. Uh, in the past, excessive data volume was a storage issue, but now since the storage costs are a lot less, uh, other issues emerge, uh, including how to determine the relevance of all this data and how to use analytics to create value uh, from the relevant data. And then with um, 
vo uh, velocity with uh, velocity data streaming and an unprecedented speed and of course needs to be dealt with in a timely manner. Uh, RFID tags, sensors, smart meter metering uh, are driving that need to deal with uh, vast amounts of data in near real time. So we're acting quickly enough to deal with that data velocity as a, as a, a challenge that we're going to talk about. And variety, the data comes in all types of format, uh, structured numeric data in traditional databases, uh, information created from line of business applications, unstructured text documents, email, video, audio, uh, stock ticker data, financial transactions. So uh, managing, merging, governing all these different varieties, varieties of data is something uh, many organizations still grapple with. And um, some in the industry, I think this is from SAS, um, there's two additional uh, things that, uh, dimensions that they uh, talk about. Uh, variability, um, so in addition to increasing velocities and varieties of data, Data flows can be highly inconsistent with periodic peaks. Uh, and then complexity, today's data comes from uh, multiple sources uh, that we'll be talking about. And it's still an undertaking to link, match, cleanse, and transform all this data across the systems. Um, so some others have also um, focused on additional of these such as uh, veracity and, and value. So with all that said, that's what this slide was indicating. Um, do we agree on what big data is? It's a fan, it's a spear, it's a wall, it's a rope, it's a tree, it's a snake. Uh, it just, it, it can vary depending on who you ask. So, uh, the types of data companies are collecting as big data, the different sources. Um, so this big data concept, uh, it can combine multiple data sources with structured and unstructured data into uh, a single tool. So the consumers of the data um, using, um, analysis or business intelligence tools, um, analyzing that data can uh, make for uh, better business uh, decisions with that information. So from an operational perspective, um, it makes a lot of sense to look at that wider um, set of information, uh, this large amount of data, uh, so that um, suggestions can be made uh, about things customer customers may want to purchase or uh, and uh, thereby max, maximizing the sales and satisfying customer requirements. So um, let me scroll down a little bit here. Um, so um, Administrative functions like finance, HR, so forth. Um, and it's really, uh, really any business can um, gain a large number of opportunities uh, where big data could make a difference. So uh, there's a huge number of opportunities for really any business to utilize the, the big data um, to increase sales, um, satisfy customer requirements, like I just mentioned. Um, so uh, there's some ideas here um, I was going to throw out there. So compare what uh, is the average cash receipt timeline for customers against the wider market so it's possible to target improvement activities. 
investment decisions based on social media popularity of a company. Um, so with uh, what you see in this graphic, and, and some of this uh, comes from the sources listed on the graphic. So uh, what it's showing within this graphic, uh, we have 54 uh, percent have complex data, hierarchical or legacy sources, 6% scientific data, 29% spatial data, 92% structured data, 54% semi-structured data, and so forth. So I won't read all of those, um, but you can go back and, and look at the graphic and, and uh, read through the article a little bit more. So that means it's all about gaining business insight um, from this data. So one of the things that I wanted to uh, throw out here before we dis discuss how that um, how that helps you when you um, can gain the business insights from that big data, um, how can you gain um, the big insight. So uh, one of the articles I was reading, there are six steps to gaining uh, big insights from big data. Um, and they put it as getting to the big aha, big data uh, can provide is easier than it sounds. Um, so there are a few things, um, these six steps uh, that can help. The first is begin with the end in mind. The second is um, adding context um, around the data, um, then leveraging text analytics, then relying on proven analytic techniques, and then experimenting with machine learning to make predictions. So what the demo that I'm going to go through, uh, that's uh, what we were talking about in that demo is combining sentiment data and sales data to um, try and make predictions, of course, after the fact, but uh, trying to make predictions and analyzing uh, the sales and sentiment data um, to see if there was uh, uh, a way to do uh, um, predictions on that data, of course, after the fact, but it could be something that could be used maybe for, um, this was with the Iron Man 3 movie, but maybe something that could have predictions on what could happen in the next Iron Man movie. Um, and then uh, visualize everything. So we'll go through um, and discuss the business intelligence tools. And so in the demo uh, that I want to walk through, um, the visualization tools, uh, one was the PowerView in Excel and one was the data virtualization dashboard. Uh, but of course, uh, with data virtualization, there's a lot of options there. Okay, so, um, so the information and, and agility gap. So the gap between uh, the information and agility to get it. So as the graphic shows here, 65% um, have constantly changing business needs. 57% have IT's uh, inability to satisfy new requests in a time, timely manner. 54% have the need to be more analytics driven. 47% uh, have slow and untimely access to information. 34% uh, business user dissatisfaction with IT delivered BI capabilities. And so if you look at the um, iceberg there, only 28% users have meaningful data access and over 70% business intelligence project effort lies in data integration. So all this is setting up to um, just explain how data virtualization can bridge this gap. Um, of course, we want to uh, reduce the cost uh, for finding and accessing highly fragmented data, 
We want to improve time to market for new products and services by simplifying data access and integration. We want to deliver IT solution um, agility. We want to transform fragmented data into actionable information that delivers competitive advantage. So the um, data challenges getting bigger for users. So all the data and all the sources for that data, having to get to that data, um, it's a, a, a big challenge for users now. Um, so where is, the, where is the data? How do we get it? How can we analyze it? So I like this graphic. Um, and it says finance here. We're not sure about this Hadoop thing. Could you just dump it all into Excel for us? So um, the user just wants to get their data in a way that they can uh, use it and analyze it. So Red Hat's big data strategy. So um, to remember the pragmatic definition of beta, uh, big data. Um, I think SPA, the three questions of big data. Uh, one, store, can you capture and store the data? Process, can you cleanse, enrich, and analyze the data? Access, can you retrieve, search, integrate, and visualize the data? So, of course, here uh, you want to uh, reduce the information gap through cost effectively making all data easily easily consumable for analytics. So with uh, data virtualization and the big data platform that we're going to talk about, you want to bridge that gap between data and analytics. So we want to provide the big data for everyone. So we want to make sure that that access to big data um, is uh, easily consumable. So this example is uh, showing how um, we can do that um, with data virtualization. So if you notice here, it says uh, reporting tool accesses the data visualization server via rich SQL dialect. Um, the data virtualization server translate rich SQL dialect to Hive QL. Hive translate SQL to MapReduce. MapReduce runs uh, MapReduce job on big data. So uh, when you're looking at this flow um, and the easy access to big data, uh, there in the middle data virtualization server, uh, so on the bottom, we're doing the connection to the data. On the top, we're consuming that data. And in the middle with the data virtualization server, um, we can have unified views, uh, uh, anything that we want to put in there that we want to do uh, with translations of the data and so forth. This example is just showing uh, the one data source. Uh, what's powerful with data virtualization, of course, is the data federation and multiple sources. Uh, so in the demo that I'm going to show you, it's uh, the Hadoop data uh, and Hortonworks data platform that we're accessing through Hive uh, for sentiment data, and it's combining that with sales data out of MySQL. Um, so let's uh, continue. So this is probably the best graphic, I think, for describing data virtualization, um, even around big data, uh, to anybody that uh, wants to know what the product is. What, what does data virtualization do for us? So, Data virtualization provides the three-step process to connect data sources and data consumers. First, uh, on the bottom, we have connect. 
So if you see there the native data connectivity, excuse me, um, we can connect to a, a whole bunch of data sources, Hadoop, NoSQL, cloud apps, data warehouses, uh, files, enterprise apps, mainframe, so forth. So um, connect, uh, we have fast access to the data from disparate systems with those data sources that I mentioned with uh, disparate access method and storage models. So they can be siloed and complex. So then in the middle, we have com Compose, which allows creation of um, unified virtual database, um, unified views, the common data model, data transformations. So it allows us to compose uh, with what we need for the, uh, uh, for the consumer. So uh, seamlessly exposes unified virtual data model and views available in real time through a variety of open standards, data access methods to support different tools and applications. So that's virtualized transform federate. Then um, at the top, we have Consume, which is the standards-based data provisioning with JDBC, ODBC, REST, so OData. So there uh, with the data consumers, we talk about BI reports and analytics, mobile applications, so applications and portals, ESP, TL, so easy real-time information access. So the um, Consume, seamlessly exposing the unified virtual data model and views available in real time through a variety of the open standards data access methods to support different tools and ap applications. So the JBoss data virtualization software implements all three steps internally while isolating, highlighting, I'm sorry, isolating, hiding complexity of data access methods, transformations, and data merge logic details from information consumers. So this enables the uh, organization to acquire actionable unified information when they want it and the way that they want it um, at their business speed. So, uh, yep, just making sure I'm in the right place here. So the benefits of data virtualization on big data. Uh, so we'll go uh, through a couple of these real quick. Um, the enterprise de de democratization, <laughs> say that 10 times real quick, um, of data. And what that means is giving the full access of data across the whole uh, enterprise. Uh, everybody has access to it and not uh, siloed or only uh, certain parts of the enterprise. Then um, multiple reporting and an analytic tools can be used by consuming uh, one of the standards-based data provisioning uh, that I mentioned, JDBC, ODBC, REST, SOAP, ODATA. Um, the easy data access um, with the connectors that data virtualization has. Uh, now, uh, you can access uh, the data easily, and more connectors are being added uh, with each release. The integration of existing data sources and big data through the connectors, the sharing of integration uh, standards, the collaboration development on big data with the data virtualization tools, and the fine-grained security through the virtual database security and increase time to market of reports on big data. So that brings us to um, convergence of the four data trends. Um, and of course, it, this comes down to the mixing of the structured, unstructured processing and streaming. So here with the big structured data, transactional and analytical, the big streaming data, events and messages, the big data processing, such as Hadoop, the big unstructured data, 
such as the uh, social and interactions. And that brings us to the middle of the big data uh, integration and the uh, convergence. So with this diagram, uh, we're looking at a comprehensive middleware platform. Uh, the how to capture, process, and integrate the big data volume velocity variety, the three Vs that I mentioned before. Um, so if you'll look over on the left, it talks about capture and process um, with structured data, streaming data, semi-structured data. Um, on the right, that goes across the capture and process and integrate and analyze. Um, we have the Red Hat storage, Linux, and uh, virtualization. So the semi-structured data um, is there through Hadoop. The streaming data is through the messaging and event processing with AMQ and BRMS. Uh, and the structured data uh, there uh, straight through uh, the data integration with data virtualization. And of course, the in-memory cache with JBoss Data Grid um, can be used to um, get to Hadoop. Um, and um, then on the top, we have the BI analytics with historical, operational, uh, predictive, and the SOA composite applications. So I think this diagram gives a good representation of the comprehensive middleware platform, something that we like to call big data, uh, red hat big data platform. Um, and so uh, this is listing those products that are shown in that diagram which is the integration software, JBoss data virtualization, JBoss uh, BRMS for the rules, JBoss AMQ for the messaging, JBoss data grid uh, for the in-memory caching. Um, and then for the infrastructure software, uh, I mentioned that it, it went um, across the whole spectrum, the Red Hat storage, the Red Hat enterprise virtualization, the Red Hat enterprise Linux. And why drink a sip of water real quick here. Okay, so just real quickly, um, we'll talk about uh, a couple of real world examples. We'll just go through those use cases. And um, one of the things that we're trying to do is gather all these different use cases, put them into categories, and document them um, out on Mojo and um, uh, PNT and some other locations so that, uh, and the uh, partner sites, make sure that everybody can get to them and see what kind of problem uh, data virtualization is solving or even the um, Red Hat big data uh, platform that we just mentioned. So big data in the utilities. This is an example of uh, how data virtualization was used in a utility use case. So the objective um, for this use case was combine data from smart meters on homes with data from electricity generation and transmission and make it available to uh, power providers. So uh, the problem space is that the original smart grid project looked only at reading this information from the meters on houses. And now this data needs to be combined with generation and trans transmission data in a cost-effective way because you want to be able to analyze all this data and not have uh, um, data silos, of course. So the data points are all over the place, the sensors on the lines, in the field, homes, et cetera. And so with uh, the diagram I just showed you a minute ago, the Red Hat Big Data Platform, uh, the products uh, are used um, in this solution. 
So uh, the information must be acceptable to multiple power providers through a common interface. So the solution with um, the Red Hat Big Data Platform that I mentioned um, is to use messaging to collect that data. So that would be AMQ from a variety of sources and route it to a, a CEP for initial filtering. Process with Hadoop, Map, Reduce, and BRMS and distribute data to, excuse me, to data virtualization to combine with other sources and consume with BI tools. Now, I don't know what BI tools were used in this case. Um, there are a lot of uh, BI tools out there, but with the standards that we use, um, they, um, most of the BI tools can consume the data from data virtualization. Um, to be combined with other sources and consume with BI tools and or to JDG for in-memory data caching or send to archive. So this diagram, Elias, I, I shared the speaker deck with you. Uh, so you can go and um, get this presentation and look more closely at these diagrams. So uh, the smart grid, uh, this use case of um, gathering all the data and processing it. Um, over on the left-hand side, we have the PM admin um, with the data schedule and data reports that's um, doing the composing and the rules creation updates. Uh, you'll notice that on the top left. And then if you'll notice over on the far right, it's going through each of the tiers, the element connection tier, um, and you'll notice on the bottom, transmission generation consumer. Um, we have the element connection tier, the data adoption, or sorry, adaption and routing tier, the normalized data tier, uh, then our data tier, uh, and there's data virtualization and then our API exposure and portal tier. So the next use case that we have on here, um, and I mentioned this in the data virtualization workshop last night or yesterday, um, the retail consumer use case. So uh, this is trying to gain better insight for the intelligent inventory management so the objective is the right merchandise at the right time and the right price. So the problem, can I utilize social data and sentiment analysis with their inventory and purchase management system? So uh, you have these inventory databases, uh, sentiment analysis, um, and um, you can't utilize that data uh, together. So the solution is to leverage JBoss data virtualization to mash up the sentiment analysis data with inventory and purchasing system data. And leverage BRMS to optimize the pricing and stocking decisions. I don't know what specific customer this was, um, but this is a um, real-world example and specific use case for a customer. So the uh, JDA, JBoss Data Virtualization Product Roadmap in Big Data, I just wanted to include a, a, a couple of um, things here. So. Um, this is what's coming with JBoss Data Virtualization 6.1. Um, we have the full, and this is split into three different um, tiers here. Um, the full connectivity support for uh, MongoDB, Cloudera, Impala, Apache Solar, and a tech preview for Cassandra and Accumulo. I, Accumulo is really interesting. Um, that's a project that uh, came out of NSA around uh, security of big data. Then with cloud, we have the alpha availability on OpenShift. 
they actually go out on OpenShift right now and uh, go to the openshift.com slash XPaths and you can actually start working with the data virtualization cartridge and some examples there. Support for Amazon Redshift and Amazon Simple DB. The deployment productivity. We have the security audit log and dashboard builder. This morning, uh, Kim and Blaine did a webinar um, on um, security. And I believe Blaine tried to um, include the security audit, audit log kind of as a preview. So you can go to the redhat.com slash webinar site and you can watch the uh, DV and security webinar from this morning. Uh, excuse me. And uh, you can take a look around what that's supposed to look at what that's supposed to be. Then we have improved usability for custom translator, the AP 6.3 support, the RHEL 7 support with MariaDB, and the Zool JVM support. So uh, I think 6.1 uh, has a lot coming, uh, a lot of capability and features coming uh, that people are asking for. A lot of what's on this slide um, I've been specifically asked about. So uh, I think it's going to be a real good release uh, and look forward to that. So just um, a couple of uh, slides on some demos here. Um, we did a uh, demo with LucidWorks. We're going to try and do more with them. Uh, and this was uh, with data virtualization and Red Hat storage. Uh, and then we're going to talk about Hortonworks as well. Um, and so uh, just a little bit about LucidWorks, uh, if you haven't heard of them before, um, they do a lot with solar and tech search. So uh, they employ a lot of committers, uh, they make a lot of enhancements, um, and they offer the open source and open core search solutions. Um, so solar would be the community project, uh, or Lucent and solar is the community projects and LucidWorks. Uh, is the uh, commercial uh, product. So then um, it's supposed to enable better data-driven decisions uh, with, as you notice at the bottom, full text search capabilities and so forth and the high performance indexing. Um, so you can go uh, take a look at those. So this demonstration, if you'll notice, I put the video link at the bottom. I haven't put that out on Vimeo yet, um, but you should be able to go right to my Google Drive and watch that video on data virtualization and LucidWorks. Um, so uh, LucidWorks and Solar uh, were to provide the full text search and statistics, data virtualization providing the data through TIA JDBC driver, and pulling the data from Hive Hadoop CSV file and XML file, and the Red Hat storage providing the enterprise data repository. So this is just showing that demonstration architecture uh, with solar uh, data virtualization, the data sources, and then those data sources being stored on Red Hat storage. So uh, the next set of demos uh, to discuss, and then we'll get to the one that I really wanted to, to go through, uh, the demos with Hortonworks and data virtualization. So Hortonworks, of course, um, does a lot with Hadoop development and operations. Um, so they were founded in 2011. Um, by 24 engineers from their original Yahoo Hadoop development operations team. Um, and Hortonworks drives um, innovation uh, via the um, Apache process. And Hortonworks is responsible for around 50% of the core code base advances to Apache Hadoop. And I really like uh, what Hortonworks has out there as far as a um, data platform sandbox. 
So the demos that I'm going to show you here uh, revolve around working with Hortonworks data platform, which is a VM um, where you can just load data, go through tutorials that are on the Hortonworks site to load data and then federate that data with other um, data sources. So the with data virtualization. So with the Hortonworks data platform sandbox, um, it has a uh, Enterprise Ready Yarn, the Hadoop operating system, um, Stinger Phase 2, interactive SQL queries at petabyte scale, reliable NoSQL and Hadoop with HBase. And if you look to the right, um, the Hortonworks data platform has all those components already loaded, installed, ready to go. So, uh, this first demonstration, we were actually working on this, and I was hoping it would be done already, but it's still in process. Uh, so the objective was to secure the data according to role for row level security and column masking. The problem is being able to hide regional data, um, say US region and EU region um, so, uh, data, such as patient data from region-specific users. The solution is leveraging the JBoss data virtualization to provide that row-level security and masking of columns. So if you look on the right, uh, two Hortonworks data platforms, one with region data, uh, US data, one with EU data, doing the unified view and the security uh, in the middle there with the virtual database. Um, for the row level security and column masking, and then analyzing it with the uh, data virtualization uh, dashboard uh, according to the user role. So I did include the link, um, but I have to add the video there. Um, that's just a, a placeholder. Um, and this one contains the demo that I really want to go through with you um, because it does show a lot of capabilities. Um, and that is uh, uh, an objective of determining uh, if sentiment data from the first week of the Iron Man 3 movie is a predictor of sales. So the problem cannot utilize the social data and sentiment analysis with sales management. Uh, the solution is to leverage the JBoss data virtualization to mash up that sentiment analysis data with ticket and merchandise sales data on MySQL into a single view of the data. So over on the right hand side, we have um, Hortonworks data platform with the sentiment data and MySQL with sales. In the middle, we create the unified view. And then at the top, we consume it with the um, Microsoft Excel Power View, as well as the data virtualization dashboard. What I like about this is it's showing multiple uh, data sources. Um, the uh, TIA designer um, to do the federated data and the multiple consumers. So the link that I put on the bottom there uh, that does contain uh, the original slide deck uh, with a uh, video of the demo at the end. So the system requirements, I just wanted to note what is contained within that demo, uh, which is the JDK, the data virtualization, uh, Developer Studio, uh, TID, and the integration stack, um, and then the actual code, if you want to try it on your own, is out on data virtualization by example, and that can be combined with the Hortonworks data platform, and then, of course, Red Hat storage. So I'm going to go through a couple of slides, uh, I'm sorry, screenshots on that demo, but you can go back and look at the video on uh, the demo, and I'd be happy to uh, do a Google Hangout with anybody and, and go through the actual uh, uh, demo. It's just a lot, uh, uh, multiple things to start up, and right now I have it on multiple machines. So um, what I wanted to show first is that um, this Tweets BI data, so this is Squirrel Client. Um, so Squirrel Client and I believe it's SQL Exec or Executive SQL uh, are really nice tools uh, to uh, use JDBC or um, 
it has other options as well, but uh, use JB, JDBC to connect to a database. So with this demo, I connected to uh, the Hive, the uh, MySQL, and then the unified view with the uh, TIA JDBC driver. There's using the Hive JDBC driver for um, uh, Hive Hadoop that's in Hortonworks data platform. And that's what this is showing, the tweets BI table. So that's the uh, all the um, tweets from Twitter uh, with a sentiment about the movie by country. Um, so that's uh, very large. Then we have the sales model from MySQL. And then, of course, there's the sales union view uh, with TIAD. So this is the, um, the sales data from MySQL, which is by country. And then with that unified view, which you can also access through um, Squirrel Client um, to test it. Uh, I wanted to show how it took these two specific sources and um, first with um, the tweets data, it's giving an average sentiment by country. If you'll look in the uh, transformation editor there, and then it comes up with that unified view um, by country with the average sentiment and all the sales data. So very powerful. Of course, um, in the uh, demo, I show previewing that data. So this is showing how I pulled that data into um, the data virtualization dashboard. And then this is showing that um, in Microsoft Excel, I pulled in the same data and then I, and this is using ODBC, and then I created a sales goal column whether it met, exceeded, or didn't meet the sales goal. And then here, this is showing in Microsoft Power View um, the uh, number of tickets sold, which is by size of the circle, and then the sales goal by color, whether it met, exceeded, or failed uh, meeting the sales goal. So um, that was a presentation that I wanted to do, kind of went through that. Um, kind of quick. Uh, so uh, we have a couple of minutes uh, for questions, um, and then we're going to be doing the uh, fuse on OpenShift. Uh, so hopefully um, everybody um, liked that, and um, if you want to refer back to the presentation, of course, I included that link. So let me see what kind of um, question, questions we have here. So let's go back up. Yeah, I agree. Um, wow, 408%. I don't know. I have to go back and look and see which slide that was. Um, when you add in uh, rel plus rev plus RHS with the dupe, you've got a winning solution. Yeah, I think um, I really like um, what we've de defined as the big data. The, let me start over. <laughs> I like what we've defined as the red hat big data platform. Um, it's not something that, you know, is one product that we're selling, um, but it's that group of products that um, help the big data space for our customers. So not just data virtualization, of course, is a big part of it, um, but the um, other products as well with rel, rel rev, um, storage, um, AMQ, BRMS, data virtualization. Um, so I think that's pretty neat. And we're actually, um, next week, we're going to do a um, webinar on data virtualization and um, BRMS. So who is the utility company? Got a possible prospect energy company here. If you will send me a email offline then uh, to remind me, then I'll try and find out who that is because I don't know 
uh, which utility company they pulled that use case from. But if you'll send me an email, I'll make sure that uh, I get you that information. Um, and I'll probably need to get it from Syed or Kim. Um, I believe they know, um, but I'm not sure. I'll have to check with them. Please send me an email on that. Yeah, let, let me click on that link. Let me see what. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah, the um, I like the link you put in on um, the Lego. Uh, open that up so I can show everybody. Uh, so I like that Lego picture. Um, hopefully everybody can see that. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I like that Lego picture a lot. <laughs> the uh, BI analytics, so uh, um, at the top going down um, through the stack to the operating system, very nice. Yeah. Okay, so let's see, what were the... Yeah, so... Um, Elasticsearch and Lucene, Luc uh, well, well, I need to uh, do more in the presentation on that and more with uh, data virtualization. Uh, because with Lucid Works, of course, um, and I have to go back and look at this too, I believe they were um, concerned when we were working with them uh, because we had Elasticsearch within uh, one of the slides and that was um, a competitor with Lucidworks and what they were doing. Um, Row level security and column masking. Yeah, that's um, very nice. So if you go back and look at that webinar they had today, I looked at the video that Blaine was doing. He did a really good job on the security and column masking in addition to what I was talking about with the audit logging. Um, so that's um, a good webinar to look at and see his demo. And then when I finish what I was doing with Hortonworks Data Platform and putting that out there, um, then those are really good examples of that. Yeah, the estimated results against the real number numbers. Um, Yeah, that would be that would be nice to send that out via email. And <laughs> Red Hat stands on top. Yep, awesome. Okay, so uh, we have just a couple of minutes before we go into Fuse on OpenShift, and so um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the data virtualization uh, with big data presentation um, because I want to uh, take a couple of minute break here before we get started on the next one. Um, and so thanks for everybody attending the data virtualization uh, meeting. And um, we'll get started on Fuse on OpenShift in just um, about four minutes from now.